Independence Day and Cinco de Mayo. Mexicans are a truly festive people. Any excuse gives way for a celebration. But the most important and exciting are the 16th of September, or Independence Day, and Cinco de Mayo, the 5th of May. It is a good occasion to show the pride of being Mexican. The love of the motherland and the certainty of being a free country thanks to the many men and women whose struggle made history. ¿Por qué tiene tanta importancia esta fiesta para nosotros los mexicanos? ¿Por qué? Porque representa prácticamente lo que es la libertad de los mexicanos, ¿no? La independencia significó mucho para que nuestro país pudiera continuar y desenvolverse de la manera que hace que lo ha hecho actualmente, ¿no? The quest for independence started on the 16th of September, 1810, to become a free nation, no longer submitted to Spanish rule. The struggle went on for 10 years. Finally, in 1821, the first independent Mexican government was established. Over the years, Mexico received economic support from several nations, France and England among them. Later on, even Spain supported the new country. Thus, Mexico became indebted. However, the country could not pay the loans back because of the ongoing political unrest caused by the many groups struggling for power. In 1862, these three European countries dispatched their fleets to Mexican shores pursuing not only money, but also land and rights as payment for their loans. A government representative greeted them and explained that Mexico did acknowledge its debts, but it had no funds to pay them. They were offered payment warrants in exchange. The Spaniards and the British decided to accept the warrants and withdrew from the scene. But the French government's representative did not accept the offer and prompted his troops to invade the country and head toward Mexico City, the nation's capital. President Benito Juarez reacted immediately and prepared the defense. He commanded Ignacio Zaragoza, a young general, to fortify the city of Puebla and repel the French invaders. The battle was by no means even. France then had the world's most powerful army and had sent more than 6,000 men. But the Mexicans' courage and love of freedom led them to fight back. On the 5th of May, 1862, the forts of Loreto and Guadalupe in the city of Puebla became the scene of the first historical defeat of the great European army. The state of Puebla, site of majestic volcanoes, is located in the central part of the country, some 200 kilometers northeast of Mexico City.
Its capital, the city of Puebla, is one of the best examples of colonial heritage preservation. It was founded by the Spaniards in the year 1530. And it became of significant importance because of its strategic location between Mexico City and the port city of Veracruz. The city was first known as Puebla de los Angeles, or Puebla of the Angels, for legend has it that angels themselves designed it. Puebla, as opposed to Mexico City, was not built on top of former native cities, but rather on uninhabited land. This founding of cities was aimed at bringing Spanish families to colonize the new continent to work the land, and to indoctrinate the natives in the Catholic faith. Religion played a predominant role in the life of this city. There are more than 60 churches, the most important of them being the cathedral, located in the Socolo or main square. A unique feature of Puebla's Baroque architectural style is the use of the colorful Talavera tiles. Talavera ceramics are the result of a blend of European, Chinese, and native techniques and patterns. These are just a few of the reasons why Puebla has become one of Mexico's most fascinating cities, full of tradition, legends, history, and culture. Independence Day and the 5th of May are national holidays, so schools and offices remain closed for people to celebrate. All sorts of ornaments and decorations can be seen in houses, buildings and cars throughout the country. People can buy little flags and balloons and whistles on nearly every street corner. Everything turns green, white and red like the Mexican flag. There is a meaning to each one of these colors. Green stands for independence. White stands for the Catholic religion. And red stands for the unity of the Mexican people. Flags of all sizes wave proudly from every house. When night falls, towns and cities are illuminated with colorful signs. The most spectacular ones are displayed around Mexico City's famous Zócalo. The military parade is a way of paying tribute to all the heroes, soldiers, and civilians who gave their lives for their country.
Schools participate in parades too. It takes months of rehearsal and preparation for marching bands to perform and compete among others to be the best. Parades are so popular that people wake up early and rush to the streets, seeking a good spot to watch and enjoy them. Preparamos desde como un mes antes o más, este, marchando por varios lados y este es muy padre porque es toda la escuela todos los días. Este, dos horas y es muy bonito. Nos concentramos muy, muy bonito todos. ¿Le, to ¿Le toca alguna actividad de preparación del desfile? Profesor? Sí, claro que sí. A nosotros nos toca preparar, en mi caso, a la compañía de mujeres. Y pues es un trabajo que vale la pena y se siente uno satisfecho al terminar el desfile. El significado de la batalla del 5 de mayo cuando se derrotó a los franceses aquí en, en Puebla, en los fuertes de Loreto y Guadalupe. Entonces yo creo que es una fecha que se debe recordar siempre y que todos los mexicanos, todos absolutamente no debemos pasar desapercibidos porque pues significó para, para nosotros la, la derrota del ejército francés que era el, el más poderoso en ese entonces. Y por un puñado de mexicanos incluso los acapuastas participaron activamente y fueron de los mejores. ¿no? Entonces por eso es que es tan importante esta fecha para todos y nosotros como profesores debemos estar conscientes de la fecha que vivimos. Each city has a Zócalo, where celebrations take place and people of all ages attend. Families arrive early in the evening. Es una fecha importante en la historia de la Ciudad de México y vinimos un ratito aquí al parque a divertirnos. And later, the always lively young people arrive. The square livens up with music, laughter, and vibrant colors. No celebration can be complete without food. A few days before the big event, hundreds of food stalls start lining up on the streets, tempting passers-by to try all kinds of typical foods and sweets, and in some places, the local version of punch, made out of guava, sugar cane, raisins, and apples. Restaurants all over offer the most representative specialty of Mexican cuisine, mole poblano. It is a thick, brown, spicy sauce that comes from blending more than 40 ingredients and is spread on top of pieces of turkey or chicken and Mexican-style red rice. Mole is so popular that it is served on nearly every important occasion. There is another delicacy that comes from Puebla as well, chiles de nogada. These are stuffed green bell peppers covered with a whitish nut sauce and decorated with crimson pomegranate seeds. This is a dish created in a convent back in 1821, where the nuns used ingredients matching the colors of the flag to honor the first head of office of the newly independent Mexico who visited this city. For all Mexicans alike, eating is a pleasure, an adventure, and a fine art that plays an important part in their lives. A lot of people choose to wear typical costumes, such as the charro for the men and the china poblana for the ladies. For those who don't have such costumes, the option is to dress in green, white, and red. A few years ago, 
people started wearing the Viva Mexico legend on their faces. There are even stands at the squares where people can get their faces stamped with it for a nominal fee. Children enjoy wearing hats made out of balloons, paper mustaches for the boys, and long paper eyelashes for girls. Everybody is there to have fun and make noise with whistles and rattles and horns. In most towns, there are carnivals set near the squares where people enjoy the rides and play games. There are usually shows in the square where there are dances and music with the ever popular mariachi bands. As night falls, more and more people gather until the squares are so crowded that there is virtually no room to move. Mexicans do enjoy being with each other because to them, to celebrate means to share joy and good times with everybody. The highlight of the evening is when the names of the national heroes are spoken out loud and it ends with everybody crying, Viva Mexico! After the ceremony is over, the sky brightens up with colorful fireworks that burst out like the hearts of the people. For Mexicans are proud of being free and independent and look forward to a promising future.